Looking back at lesson three, we see that every new Christian is baptized by the Spirit into the body of Jesus Christ. We're literally baptized into his death, burial, and resurrection. Thus, water baptism pictures physically that which took place spiritually when we got saved. It pictures our death, burial, and resurrection with Jesus. Now, generally, there are two kinds of baptisms that are practiced by churches, sprinkling and immersion. Some practice pouring, but only one of these adequately pictures our death, burial, and resurrection. It's immersion. Notice that when the Ethiopian eunuch was baptized, he and Philip went down both into the water, and then after his baptism, they were come up out of the water. We see this in Acts chapter 8 and verse 38 and 39. He commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his own way rejoicing. You know, there would have been no reason for either one of them to go into the water, much less both of them, if Philip had only sprinkled the eunuch. However, they both went into the water so that Philip could immerse him. You see, in water baptism by immersion, when you are standing waist deep in the water before your baptism, you see a type of the crucifixion because the surface of the water crosses your body. As we saw in the previous lesson, we are crucified with Christ. When you're lowered into the water, you see a type of your death and burial as you are completely submerged under the water. And since we are raised with Jesus, you see your resurrection when you are raised up again out of the water. Your water baptism, therefore, typifies your spirit baptism that was found in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 5. Now, in the scriptures, New Testament believers are baptized for several reasons. Here's the first. We are baptized in water after we're saved because we are commanded by Jesus Christ to be baptized. You see, following salvation, Jesus Christ commanded that all new Christians be baptized in water as a visible testimony of their spiritual baptism. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So we baptize our converts to fulfill the Lord's command. But that's not the only reason. Another reason that we baptize our converts in water after salvation is because Jesus Christ was baptized in water. In Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 and 14 and 15 and 16 and 17, we read all about the baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so for now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You see, Jesus Christ was baptized, as the scripture says in verse 15, to fulfill all righteousness. And observe something else that was in the text there in verse 17. God the Father was well pleased with him. So you know what? When you're baptized in water, you also will please God by being baptized. So there's another reason then why Christians are baptized after we get saved. Not only because the Lord did it, not only because he commanded us to do it, but also because the Christians that are saved in the Bible are baptized in water. And we read about these Christians when we go here to the book of Acts, like in Acts chapter 8, verse 38 and 39, the Ethiopian eunuch was baptized. In Acts chapter 9, Saul, who is later called Paul and writes the, so many of the books in the New Testament, he is baptized after his salvation in Acts chapter 9, verse 18. Ananias baptized him. And then we see in Acts chapter 10, Cornelius and his household are baptized after their salvation. In verse 48, Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. We find in Acts chapter 16 that uh, the Philippian jailer was baptized after he got saved. 
he came to Paul and to Silas and he said, What must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And that same night he was baptized, he and all his straightway. In Acts chapter 19, we find that Paul baptized the disciples at Ephesus after they believed the Lord Jesus Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Bible says. And we also find that Paul baptized Crispus and Gaius and the household of Stephanus in Corinth. We read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 14 through 16. So those are the reasons that you're baptized in water. Jesus did it. The New Testament Christians did it. Jesus commanded us to do it. But do you know something? We are never baptized in water in order to be saved. Water baptism has no regenerating power, no saving power. And you have to beware because there are churches that use Acts chapter 2 verse 38 to prove that you have to be baptized in water in order to be saved. But Acts chapter 2 verse 38 is not our New Testament salvation. You know this because Acts chapter 2 verse 38 was given to the Jews who crucified Jesus Christ. In verse 36, in verse 14, and in verse 22 of the context, we find that Peter is preaching to ye men of Israel. That's something to really take note of. As a matter of fact, if you will compare what happened there with what happened to Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, verses 43 to 48, you'll get a very clear picture. Water baptism in Acts chapter 10 clearly followed Cornelius' salvation and was not the instrument of it. As a matter of fact, Paul even told the council in Acts chapter 11 verses 15 to 17 that there was a big difference between water baptism and spirit baptism and the spirit baptism is what saved him. The Spirit of God saved him after he believed the preaching of Peter but before he was baptized in water. He saved in verse 44 He's baptized in verse 48. That's why Paul said, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. He said that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. So, if getting saved depends on water baptism, then Jesus would have sent Paul to baptize, but he didn't. And that's because water baptism can't save you. So, if you've been saved, but you have not been scripturally baptized in water following your salvation, then you know what? You need to be baptized in the next available baptism service. Water baptism prior to your salvation or for salvation and water baptism by sprinkling or by pouring, they're not scriptural. So, though, though you might have had those before you got saved, those are not the instruments of your salvation. We encourage you to be baptized now that you're saved, and we thank God for your salvation. May God bless you.